to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. The great man of suffering, Job, said, I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Job chapter 23, verse number 12. Have you ever thought that the word of God is more important than eating? Do we have that kind of passion for Bible study and for holy things? Job did. And friend, what if we had that kind of mentality about the Word of God? Stay tuned as we're going to study today about passion for studying the Scriptures. We're so glad that you've joined us for our study today. As always, we want you to know that today's lesson is being brought to you by individual Christians and congregations of the Church of Christ. The Lord's Church in your local area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Whether that be on Sunday for worship or Wednesday for Bible study, you would be an honored guest at any of their assemblies. You'll find people there who love God, who love others, and who are deeply concerned about the souls of men and women. Friend, if you've got a Bible question, maybe you're wondering about salvation or the church or, or any number of religious uh, matters, you'll find people in the Lord's church in your local area who'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God with you in kindness and love and look at the truth of God's Word. Also, here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your desire to know God better. We encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. From there, you can access all our lessons. They're available to you free of charge. In fact, if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson or any of our lessons, just go to our website, fill out a media request form. We'd be happy to make that available to you as a digital download or other formats if you need that as well. And friend, we want to encourage you also to check us out on Facebook, like our Facebook page, follow us on that. Great way to keep up with things that we're doing. And then, of course, in our fast-paced world today, where everybody's got a smartphone, we want to encourage you to check out the Gospel of Christ app that's available in the respective play stores. You can get it there, and it's a great way to keep up with our new lessons, what we're doing, and just so that you can know how we're trying to spread the Gospel and reach people with the news of Jesus Christ. And as always... We want to thank you today for joining us for our study. Hope you've got your Bible ready. Let's look to the Word of God together. There are people throughout the Scripture who had a great passion for God and His divine Word. Let me mention two or three of those to you. Hilkiah, Shaphan, the scribe, and Josiah the king are a perfect example of passion for Bible study. In 2 Kings 22, verses 8 through 11, as they're going into the temple, finding these things, that Hilkiah and Shaphan come across the, the Word of God, and, and, and they find it, and they, and then they realize what it is, and they begin to look at it, and they give it to the king, and he reads it, and they tear their clothes, they rend their hearts, and, and everybody from the king down, they make a dedication to go back to studying the Bible and putting God in His will first. And then the example that we led with, the suffering man, Job. Job said in Job 23, verse 12, I've treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Job would later say, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. How is it that under such great duress, Job had great faith? Job realized the word from God's mouth was way more important than anything else he could put in it. Friend, I wonder, do we think like that? Do we think the Bible is more important on a spiritual level than three meals of food a day? That's what Job said. 
Think about the example of Jesus. At a very young age, in Luke chapter 2, verse 47, as he was in the temple asking questions and being there with the scribes, they were amazed at his questions and his answers that he asked. Jesus had a passion for Bible study. Josiah did. Job did. What about us today? Do we really have a passion for studying God's Word and God's will? Friend, let's think about that today as we think about where we're at in our spiritual lives, where this country's at, and maybe where it'll be for our children and in the future. Let's ask a question as we think about passion for Bible study that I hope will motivate us to have that passion. Why do we need to even study the scripture? Why do I need to study the Bible? And why do I need to have a passion for Bible study? What's that all about? Well, friend, we need to study to make sure that we're approved by God. Don't you want to hear on that great day when the final roll is called, don't you want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant, right here, enter into the joy of your Lord. Don't you want that to be you? Well, to do that, to be approved by God, I've got to have a passion for His divine Word. Do you remember 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15? Paul said to the young evangelist Timothy, and by way of encouragement to each one of us, study to show yourself approved unto God. How do I show myself approved unto God? Study to show yourself approved unto God a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You see, in the growth process as a Christian, the Bible says in 1 Peter 2, verse 2, as a newborn babe, desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the long ago, God said to his people, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. My friend, do we really have that knowledge? Do we really have that passion for knowing God's will in our hearts and lives today? Or are sometimes we like the people in the book of Hebrews. Though by this time you ought to be teachers, sadly, you need somebody to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. You've come to need milk and not solid food. How much passion do we really have for God's divine word? Are we like Jeremiah? I love the example of Jeremiah. Jeremiah in Jeremiah 15, 16 said, Your words were found, and I did eat them, and they were to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God Almighty. Do we have a passion? Do we just hunger and thirst for the Word of God? Matthew chapter 5, verse number 6. You know, we also need to have a passion for Bible study because of the, the mass amount of confusion and error that exists in our religious world. The Bible tells us, don't be ignorant, but understand. The will of the Lord can't claim the ignorant card, can't throw out the I didn't know it or I was ignorant of that situation card. That won't work. Instead, Jesus said, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. And long ago, an evil king asked, is there any word from the Lord? Paul asked a similar question in Romans 4 verse 3. What does the scripture say? And friend, the good news is this. When you read, Paul says you can understand. Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 4. There's a lot of ignorance. There's a lot of, of people who just don't know. There are those who've never looked at what the Bible says. On the day of judgment, when I stand before God, saying to God, God, I just never knew that. Won't work. Because God's given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us. Second Peter chapter 1, verse number 3. And then a third reason. We need to study. We need a passion for Bible study today, and this is such an important one. We need a passion for Bible study so that we can make sure personally that we're right with God. 
When I stand before God, who's going to be standing there holding my hand? Here's what the Bible says. So then each of you shall give an account of himself to God. I'll be standing there. Nobody's going to prop me up. Nobody's going to hold my hand. I'll give an account personally for myself. Friend, if that's the case, I need to be personally responsible to have a passion for Bible study so that I can know that I'm right with God. Search the scriptures daily to see if these things are so. Study to make sure that you're approved by God. Speak as the oracles of God. Be ready always to give an answer. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 15. Then my friend, we need to study and have a real passion for Bible study so that we can answer the skeptic and we can teach the laws. The Bible says, be ready always. For what? To give an answer? For the reason of hope that is within you, with meekness and fear? Why is it that you Christians have hope? Why is it you believe in God? Why is it you believe the Bible is the Word of God? Why don't you accept the humanism and postmodernism and all the social ideas that exist today? Why is it that you're different? We can say, well, right here in the Bible, this is what God says. This is how God wants us to live. This is what God wants us to do. We proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. God has called us today to spread the gospel to the world, Matthew 28, verse 18. And part of that responsibility is to contend earnestly for the faith and to answer the skeptic and the critic and to share the gospel with the lost. And friend, if I really believe the Bible is the word of God, that's something to be passionate about. But then I also ought to have a a real passion for studying the Bible so that I can avoid sin in my own life. When Jesus was tempted by the devil, how did he overcome that temptation? You remember it, right? In Matthew chapter 4, Jesus has been out in the wilderness with a wild beast, without food. He's hungry. Satan now tempts him at his lowest moment, Satan thought. And he came to him and said, if you're the son of God, command these stones to become bread. If you're the son of God, cast yourself down off the temple. All these things I'll give you if you bow down and worship me. How did Jesus prevent the devil and that sin from getting in his life? Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Do you remember what Psalm 119, verse number 11 says? Your word. I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Friend, the word of God is a preventative. When I'm tempted to sin, when this problem may enter my life, when this challenge arises, if I'm passionate for Bible study and I've been reading my Bible and I've been studying and I've been thinking about what God says, those those ideas from God's word are going to flood my mind and my heart and I'm going to know what's right to do, what's not right to do, and how to address those situations. But then let's also consider this. To have passion for Bible study, there's some attitudes that I've got to have to really be passionate. What are the good attitudes we need to have a passion for studying God's Word? First, I need to understand, I need to have a a mindset that, that, that this book, this book right here, this is the very word from the mouth of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. I need to be committed to the fact that holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. These are not the words of men. These are not the popular ideas of their day. This is not what Paul thought or John thought or somebody else thought. This is the very word from the mouth of God. From cover to cover, Psalm 119, 160, the entirety of your word is truth and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. And I can know, I need to believe I can know that truth and it'll make me free that the word of God is absolute standard on everything. John 17, verse number 17. I need to realize This is God speaking to man today. God has given me everything I need 
for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called me by his own glory and his own virtue. God's holiness has issued forth and that came with the word of God and we can know God and know how to live like him. A second attitude is this. I need to believe in the, the absolute authority of the scriptures, meaning this, not only do I believe this book is the word of God, I believe this book settles the matter. I don't need anything else. I don't need all these books and catechisms and I don't need to know what everybody else thinks is popular or right. This is the final matter on all things pertaining to God and religion. And that's what the Bible says. John 2 verse 5, the mother of Jesus said, such a great statement for us today as well. Whatever he says to you, do it. That's what we're talking about. Do I have the passion and the mindset that, hey, whatever Jesus says, I just need to do it. Do I realize that all authority has been given to Christ? Matthew 28, verse 18. And that whatever we do in word or deed, we do all in the name of or by the authority of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Colossians 3, 17. Whether we eat or whether we drink or whatever we do, we do all to the glory of God. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31. Do we really believe? This settles it and that we must not add to or take away from the word of God, that it's complete and is the final authority on all matters. That's a great attitude to have passion for Bible study. And then here's a big one. A good attitude that really helps us to have passion for studying God's word is to have a humble and submissive heart. Be humble like Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 3, Samuel had the perfect attitude. He, 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 God had called to Samuel twice before. And this time, Eli realized kind of what's happening. And he tells him to go lie down. And, and it might be God talking to him. And, and Samuel says in 1 Samuel 3 verse 10, when the voice cries out, Eli, Eli, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel says, speak, Lord. Your servant hears. Oh, you talk about an attitude that promotes passion for Bible study. When I open my Bible, my heart needs to say, speak, Lord, your servant hears. Just like Moses, just like many people of old, we need to have the attitude of humility. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he'll lift you up. 1 Peter chapter 5, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Hebrews chapter 10, we need to, everyone exalts himself and be humbled. He who humbles himself truly will be exalted. And then, my friend, I need a sincere desire to only obey God. All, all I want to do in this life is obey God. In the book of Daniel, that's what made Daniel such a great man. Daniel purposed in his heart. That's what he was going to do. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. When they made that statue and they told everybody in the region, when you hear the sounding of the gong, you're going to bow down and worship this golden image. Daniel already knew he wasn't going to do that. And as it was his custom from early days with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down three times that day and prayed to the God of heaven. Did Daniel know there'd be consequences? Yeah, no doubt about it. Did he do it anyway? Absolutely. We need people like John the baptizer. John, even though he knew it, probably cost him his life. And because he had a passion for God and his word, he said to him, to Philip, Herod's brother, it's not lawful for you to have her. Mark chapter 6. Micaiah said it in the long ago. Whatever my God says to me, that will I speak. He had a sincere desire in the face of all these, these false prophets and the pressure that the kings are putting on him. Micaiah said, I don't care what everybody else is saying. Whatever God says to me, I'm going to say that. Noah preached for a long time with very little results, but it pleased God. Jesus went around preaching and doing good. The apostle Paul the same way. Friend, do we have a sincere desire to just obey God. I want you to listen to a verse in Galatians chapter 1 that I think was such a motivating factor for the Apostle Paul in verse number 10. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still pleased men, I would not be a bondservant of Jesus Christ. There was his mindset. And then have a mindset, have an attitude that an overriding passion to go to heaven 
is more important than anything else. You want to have a good mindset for passion in Bible study? Desire more than anything else to go to heaven. Paul said in Philippians 1 verse 21, For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Philippians 1, 21, Psalm 116, verse 15. Do you really want to go and be with Jesus? Jesus wants you to. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. In my Father's house are many mansions. Were it not so, I would have told you. Jesus wants us to come and live in heaven with him. But I've got to have that overriding desire more than being popular, more than being wealthy, more than having all the things of this life, have a mindset to go to heaven. Now let's talk about some benefits. What are some things that'll benefit you? I want you to see not just that we need to have that passion, but I want you to see the positive that comes from having a passion for Bible study. How is having a passion for Bible study going to benefit me and you in our lives? Number one, Bible study is gonna bring you great joy in your life. Happy is the man who walks not in the counsel of the godly, nor sits in the seat of sinners, sinners, nor stands in the place of the scornful, but happy is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. You wanna be happy? I'm talking about really happy, not just circumstance happy, but have a lasting happiness? Friend, you've got to have happiness in God and his word. Now, think about these examples. Acts 16, verse 25, Paul and Silas are in Philippi, and they put him, put in prison just simply for preaching the gospel. People told lies about them, said things that weren't true. They end up in prison, and the Bible says this, and they were in prison, and they were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. They weren't moping. They weren't down. They didn't get to, no. They were worshiping God in that dungeon in Philippi. How'd they do that? They had true joy in Christ. You see, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. If we realize giving ourselves to God is the greatest thing ever and that Bible study is only going to bring greater joy to our life, and friend, how wonderful that is. Now, let me talk to you about that joy for just a moment. That joy is connected in the Bible with knowing God and His will better. 1 John 5, verse 13, John said, these things we write to you. Here's one of the reasons the Bible was written. These things we write to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may think you have eternal life. You may guess you've probably got eternal life. That you may know you have eternal life. The more I study my Bible, the closer I draw to God, the more equipped I am with His will, the more happy I'm going to be and joyous I'm going to be because I'm confident in God's ability to save me and his ability to help me live as he wants me to live. Here's another one. What's a great benefit of Bible study? Bible study helps us to resist the devil's devices. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, Be sober. Be vigilant. Why? Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The fact that Satan is on the prowl, was on the prowl then, is on the prowl today, is still true. Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you. And friend, I assure you, Satan wants every one of us today too. How do we defeat that? Just like Jesus did. When we have a knowledge of the Word of God in our life, when we're staying in tune with the Word of God, when we're studying, growing closer to God, hiding God's Word in our heart that we might not sin against Him, it's going to help resist the temptation of the devil. But when you think about that armor, that spiritual armor that we've been given to fight the good fight of faith and defend off the enemy, one of those pieces is a sword. What is that sword? And take up the sword of spirit, which is the Word of God. Friend, it'll help us resist the devil and defeat his devices. And then thirdly, Bible study is only going to help you grow as a Christian. We want to be everything we can to serve the Lord and to give our lives to him. To do that, 
We need to hunger. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. We need to have the mindset, just like a newborn baby, I'm going to grow in the by the pure milk of the word. I'm never going to get stagnant. I'm not going to be like those in Revelation 3 who were lukewarm. Instead, I want to push forward and go onward and, and have the benefits of, of having a good Bible study in my life and in my heart. And friend, as we think about this idea, the great benefits of Bible study, please realize Bible study and the application of it, the greatest benefit we could ever tell you is Bible study and living it in your life every day is going to help us to save our soul. James 1.21, listen to these words again. James says that we're to put aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness, get the filth and the sin out of your life, and replace it with something else. Receive with meekness the implanted word. You take that seed, which is the word of God, you put it in a good and honest heart, and the Bible says it's able to save our soul. Don't you want to go to heaven? More than anything in all the world, don't you want to live with God? Live with Jesus forever in that place where there's no pain, no death, no sorrow, no crying. All the former things have passed away. To be with God, to be with Jesus, to be with saints of old, to be free from the problems and pressures and, and temptations of this life. Don't you want that more than anything? Friend, what a great benefit then. Bible study, having a passion for Bible study is only going to aid you and help you in achieving that. And so if you're not a child of God, we encourage you today. Won't you become one? Believe in Jesus with all your heart. John 8, 24. Repent of past sin in your life. Luke 13, verse 3. Confess him as Savior. Matthew 10, 32 and 33. And be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins, Acts 2.38. And if you are a child of God and maybe you've not been excited about Bible study, we hope today's lesson will encourage you to do that. And we hope you'll join us next time as we study more from God's Word. Today's closed captions are brought to you by Christian Family Bookstore in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We encourage you to visit thechristianfamilybookstore.com for all your Christian book needs. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ with its whole aim to take the Gospel to the whole world. We do that through TV, internet, free media, and streaming. Our motto truly is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world, and we believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious programs today, we're concerned about lost souls not your wallet. The gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call 844 6 Gospel. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.